namo bhagavate vasudevaya janma yasya yato nivayad itaratas charte suavikya swarat janma yasya yatam vayaritaratas charte suavikya swarat tene brahma hridaya adikavaye muyantiyat suraiha Tene Brahma Vidaya Adikavaye Mojantija Suraya Tejo Varimidam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisargomisha Tejo Varimrida Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisargomisha Dhamna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Dhamna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Oh my Lord Shri Krishna Son of Vasudeva Oh my Lord Shri Krishna Son of Vasudeva Our whole pervading personality Godhead all providing personality of God. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into as illusion. As one is illusioned by the, uh, as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of the material world. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation of the material world. <coughs> Uh, representation of water seen on fire or land seen on water. So water seen on fire, or land seen on water. By him, only because of him, do the material universes. Only because of him, do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world, which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute. Dharma Pujita Kaitravutra. Dharma Pujita Kaitravutra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastu. Atravastu. Vedyam Vastavam Astravastu. Shivadam Tapa Tapa Trayon Mulanam. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimva Purir Ishwaraha. Kimva Purir Ishwaraha. Sadhya Ridhi Avarudhyate Tra. Sadhya Ridhi Avarudhyate Tra. Kriti Bihi Susu Subhis Takshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavat Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavat Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavad Gita, by this culture of knowledge, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kapatoror galitam falam. Nigama kapatoror galitam falam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Mohor ahorasika bhuvi bhavukaha. Mohor ahorasika bhuvi bhavukaha. 
expert and thoughtful men relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even Although more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shrinvatam Swakata Krishna. Shrinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Vidyantak Stohi Abhadrani. Vidyantak Stohi Abhadrani. Vidhu Nati Suhit Satam. Vidhu Nati Suhit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from the Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from me directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is it self righteous activity? It is self righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna is dwelling in everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing and friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta prayesu bhadri. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttamas Loke Bhagavati Uttamas Loke Bhakti Bhavati Naistake Bhakti Bhavati Naistake in this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, his devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in his devotional service. Tadarajastamo bhava. Tadarajastamo bhava. Kamalobha dayaschaye. Kamalobha dayaschaye. Cheta etar anavidam. Cheta etar anavidam. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manas. Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavad tattva vigyanam. Bhagavad tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangha se jayate. Mukta sangha se jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Bidyate hridaya grantis. Bidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Siyante chascha karmani. Siyante chascha karmani. Drusta evat manishwari. Drusta Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus, the Bhakti Yoga serves the hard of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotees in Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 18, Verse Number 22. Yatra Nurakta Sahasai Vadira Yatra Nurakta Sahasai Vadira Vyapo yade hadi su sanga utam Vyapo yade hadi su sanga mutam Rajanti tat paramaham syamantyam Rajanti tat paramaham syamantyam Yasmin ahim so panasama swadharma Yasmin ahim so pasama swadharma Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Self-controlled persons who are attached to the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, can all of a sudden give up the world of material attachment, including the gross body and subtle mind, and go away to attain the highest perfection of the renounced order of life 
by which nonviolence and renunciation are consequential. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Only the self-controlled can gradually be attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Self-controlled means not indulging in sense enjoyment more than necessary. And those who are not self-controlled are given over to sense enjoyment. Dry philosophical speculation or a subtle sense enjoyment of the mind. A dry philosophical speculation is a subtle enjoyment of the mind. Sense enjoyment leads one to the path of darkness. Those who are self-controlled can make progress on the path of liberation from the conditional life of material existence. The Vedas therefore enjoin that one should not go on the path of darkness, but should make a progressive march towards the path of light or liberation. Self-control is actually achieved not by artificially stopping the senses from material enjoyment, but by becoming factually attached to the Supreme Lord by engaging one's unalloyed senses in the transcendental service of the Lord. The senses cannot be forcibly curbed, but they can be given proper engagement. Purified senses, therefore, are always engaged in the transcendental service of the Lord. This perfectional stage of sense engagement is called bhakti yoga. Those who are attached to the means of bhakti yoga are factually self-controlled and can all of a sudden give up their homely or bodily attachment for the service of the Lord. This is called paramahamsa stage. Hamsas or swans accept only milk out of a mixture of milk and water. Similarly, those who accept the service of the Lord instead of Maya's service are called the Paramahansas. They are naturally qualified with all the good attributes, such as pridelessness, freedom from vanity, nonviolence, tolerance, simplicity, respectability, worship, devotion, and sincerity. All these godly qualities exist in the devotee of the Lord spontaneously. Such Paramahansas who are completely given up to the service of the Lord are very rare. They are very rare even amongst the liberated souls. Real nonviolence means freedom from envy. This world, in this world, in this world everyone is envious of his fellow being, but a perfect Paramahansa being completely given up to the service of the Lord is perfectly non-envious. He loves every living being in relation, or he loves every living being in relation with the Supreme Lord. Real renunciation means perfect dependence on God. Every living being is dependent on someone else because he is so made. Actually, everyone is dependent on the mercy of the Supreme Lord, but when one forgets his relation with the Lord, he becomes dependent on the conditions of material nature. Renunciation means renouncing one's dependence on conditions of material nature, and thus becoming completely dependent on the mercy of the Lord. Independence means Complete faith in the mercy of the Lord without dependence on the conditions of matter. This Paramahansa stage is the highest perfectional stage in Bhakti Yoga, the process of devotional service to the Supreme Lord. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, this is a purport that has many definitions. And basically, Prabhupada is forced to make, when I say forced, it's is pleased to make all these definitions because almost everything we've learned up until the point we meet Krishna consciousness is wrong. Almost everything 
is wrong. Even the things that are right are they're only half right or partially right. So therefore, we have to be uh, uh, in contact with, with redefinitions of everything we've ever learned before and rejection of those things because they are at most partially true and at least completely false. So we can see here that this whole purport is full of definitions or redefinitions to, uh, let's say, straighten out our understanding of things, of reality. So it takes time to assimilate all this. It's not like an overnight thing. But the main reason we would want to assimilate this is because uh, we realize that we've been lied to. One of the worst things in this world is being lied to. And when you realize that someone that you trusted lied to you, you're devastated. And it's, it can cause breakdown of relationships, even close relations, family relationships, and so forth. So, just like Eudistir didn't know until it was too late that Karna was his brother, his older brother. His mother kept that secret from him. So what did he do? He cursed women that they'll never be able to keep a secret. And men are also like that too, you know. Oftentimes someone says, you promise you won't tell anyone else what I'm going to tell you right now? Yes, I promise that. And then they say, well, la, 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 la. And right away the person goes and tells someone else. <laughs> but they also say, you promise you're not going to tell anybody else, right? <laughs> yeah, it's very hard to keep a secret. Uh, and when uh, a person, like I said, finds out that they've been lied to, they feel really betrayed, especially if they've been lied to by people that they have a close relationship with. So the first definition is uh Krishna Bhakti Kaila Sarva Karma Kritahai. It's a Bengali verse. Madhulila Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhulila, twenty second chapter, sixty second verse, and it says, Faith means unflinching trust in something sublime. So what does that mean? It means it's something you don't see, but you know for sure that it exists. Now, are there anything that you have never seen, but you're absolutely sure that it exists? Well, one thing would be Vaikuntha. Uh, now the question is, have you never seen it? Hmm, that's an interesting point. Uh, actually, we have seen it. We were there in one way or another, and we fell down. But we don't remember. Let's see. However, we can be reminded of it by chanting, because uh, we don't remember because there are many layers of forgetfulness of our soul. Those layers were all the experiences we had in all the different species that we took birth in. Uh, all that is somehow or other embedded in our memory, but we can't remember it. It's, it's, it's very hazy. So. When you've developed faith in something that is sublime, it's, it's something, and, and you have unflinching trust in it, then that is real faith. So, but how can you believe in something that you can't remember ever seeing or, or experiencing? Well, for example, let's say you're listening to the radio, and on the radio it says, today, a big tree fell down in Alaska and crushed 
a, a house. Did you see the tree fall down? No. But you're receiving information. And if, as long as you trust the source of the information, you know what happened in Alaska today. Right? So this is a mundane thing. If there is transmission of knowledge through radio waves, then you can understand that there can be transmission of knowledge from the spiritual world. And that's what the Vedic mantras are, especially the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It's transmission through sound vibration from a uh, from Vaikunto or Goloka. So if the material thing is possible, that you can receive information from Alaska or Africa or China or India through sound vibration, then why not? You can receive information from the spiritual world through sound vibration. So this is explained uh, in the uh, in, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st Canto, 5th chapter, 38th verse, where it says, Thus, he is the actual seer who worships in the form of transcendental sound representation the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, who has no material form. So here, there, there it is. You can, you can become an actual seer who worships in the form of transcendental sound representation. That's what we're doing when we chant Hare Krishna. We're worshiping in the form of transcendental sound representation. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, who has no material form. And in the purport, Prabhupada makes a very important point. He says, our present senses are all made of material elements, and therefore they are imperfect in realizing the transcendental form of Lord Vishnu. He is therefore worshipped by sound representation via the transcendental method of chanting. So that's what Prabhupada taught us, the transcendental method of chanting, the sacred Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Golokera Premadana, Hare Nama Sankirtana. This Harinam, uh, Sankirtan, chanting the holy names of Krishna, has come down from the spiritual world by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. So, he, or Lord Vishnu, is therefore worshipped by sound representation via the transcendental method of chanting. Anything which is beyond the scope of experience by our imperfect senses can be realized fully by the sound representation. Well, we just gave many material examples of that. You're hearing things on the television. You're hearing things on the radio. You're hearing things on the internet. Things that you are not in the proximity of experiencing, but yet you believe it because you heard the sound representation of it. Okay. If this is materially possible. Why not spiritually? This experience is not a vague, impersonal experience. It is actually an experience of the transcendental personality of Godhead who possesses the pure form of eternity, bliss, and knowledge. So, Naham Tistantivai Kunte Yoginam Hirdaye Suva Tatat Tistantinarada Yetragayanti Madbhakta it's a very nice verse. It says, Krishna says, I am not in Vaikuntha, nor am I in the heart, hearts of the yogis. I remain where my devotees engage in glorifying my activities. So, we are in the presence of Krishna right now because we're glorifying his activities. We're, and we're chanting his holy name and names. So Krishna is here right now. And how do we experience Krishna? It's through sound vibration. So then Prabhupada says, in the Amarakosa Sanskrit dictionary, the word murti carries import in twofold meanings, namely form and difficulty. 
Therefore, Amurti Kam is explained by Acharya Shi Vishwanatha Chakravarti Thakura as meaning without difficulty. The transcendental form of eternal bliss and knowledge can be experienced by our original spiritual senses, which can be revived by chanting of the holy mantras or transcendental sound representations. So Prabhupada started off this purport by saying, our present senses are all made of material elements and therefore they are imperfect in realizing the transcendental form of Lord Vishnu. But now, in a few lines uh, below th that first statement, he says, the transcendental form of eternal bliss and knowledge can be experienced by our original spiritual senses, which can be revived by chanting of the holy mantras or transcendental sound representations. So that's why we receive the Hare Krishna mantra. It's to purify our contaminated material senses so that we can perceive the transcendental reality of Krishna's uh, form, activities, and uh, paraphernalia, etc. Such sounds should be received from the transparent agency of the bona fide spiritual master and the chanting may be practiced by the direction of the spiritual master. That will gradually lead us nearer to the Lord. This method of worship is recommended in the Pancharatrika system, which is both recognized and authorized. The Pancharatrika system has the most authorized codes of transcendental devotional service. Without the help of such codes, one cannot approach the Lord, certainly not by dry philosophical speculation. So this Pancharatrika that is uh, written by Narada Muni. And we are following that. The, the whole way we worship the deities is based on, on his book. The way we chant Hare Krishna is based on his book. The way we practice Krishna consciousness is based on his book. And, and Prabhupada says here, the Pancharatrika system is both practical and suitable for this age of quarrel. The Pancharatra is more important than the Vedanta for this modern age. Well, wow, that's a huge statement that he just made. He's saying that the Pancharatra or Pancharatrika Vidhi, Vidhi, written by Narada Muni, is more important than the Vedanta. Now, all the impersonalists, they study Vedanta. And with the, uh, the commentary of, of uh, Sankaracharya and then later on, Sankaracharya's main disciple, Sadananda Yogendra, with, who deviated completely from Sankaracharya. So, Pancharatrika is more important than Vedanta. So, that just shows how misleading or misled the impersonalists are, and the worshippers of the demigods, and all the Karmakanda uh, persons. They're all misled. They all have half truth or no truth, and they're misleading other people massively. And we run into it every day. <clears throat> so, this Maha Mantra is so powerful that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or oh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, 15th chapter, 108th, 108th verse, it says, Diksha Purush Puras Charya Vidi Apekshanakare Jiva Sparse Achandala Sabare Udare. It says, one does not have to undergo initiation or execute the activities required before initiation. One simply has to vibrate the holy name with his lips. Thus, even a man in the lowest class, Chandala, can be delivered. That's how powerful the holy name is. You don't even have to be initiated. However, don't jump to the conclusion that I should not be initiated. <laughs> because there's a long purport on this verse. Your homework is to read this purport for tomorrow. It goes on for one, two, three, almost four pages. Uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya 15th chapter, 108th verse. You should read this whole purport. Actually, the purport says that it's necessary 
to get initiated in this age of Kali because we are coming from such a low background that uh, deity worship is essential, especially for grihastas, to be able to overcome their proclivities for being lazy, for uh, not following things in a regulated way, and so forth. So deity worship regulates someone, it makes someone very clean, and, when, and it connects someone to the deity in a very significant way. So therefore, with, therefore you see in the temple here, we, we don't have a temple like the uh, Lotus Temple in Delhi. You ever been to the Lotus Temple? Is there anything inside of it? Nothing. <laughs> There's this big hole in the, in the top, right? And some light is coming in. There's nothing inside. There's no deity. There's no, not even a book. You know, it's just empty space, right? But here, we, we don't just chant Hare Krishna. We also worship Tulsi Devi, we worship Guru Devi, Prabhupada. We worship the deities and the deities, and there's, and there's uh, Gorni Thai, and Jagannath Subhadra Baladev, and Shishi Radha Nila Madhava, and Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman, and uh, Tulsi Devi. So, you know, uh, this, is, this is, as you say in Spanish, the whole enchilada. <laughs> we need the whole enchilada. We can't, we can't make it with half the enchilada because we're too low born to to make it all the way. So all these things are necessary to keep us on track, to keep us regulated. That's the whole point, to keep us regulated. So you read that purport. It's, I'm not going to read it now, but it's a very important purport. But even if you don't take initiation, but you just chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, uh, there's an example of that. Haridas Thakur. Of course, he was initiated by Lord Chaitanya, but uh, he's Lord Chaitanya. Although he was born in a Muslim family, and Prabhupada said he was uh, he was proud of his birth. <laughs> so it's, it's a little ironic that he says that. But yeah, I mean, it, it, that proves that uh, your situation of birth does not determine. Uh, who you are the rest of your life. It can change. And, and it changed dramatically in the case of Haridas Thakur. And to prove that, Lord Chaitanya made him the Namacharya. He didn't declare himself Nama Acharya or Sanatana Goswami or Rupa Goswami or Jiva Goswami. He declared Haridas Thakur as Namacharya, born in a Muslim family, but the Acharya of the Holy Name, because he was chanting over 300,000 names of Krishna every day. It takes at least 23 and a half hours to do that. So don't try it. You will probably not make it. Maybe you might, might do it one time in your life, but you wouldn't be able to do it every day, believe me. So we see that this mantra is so powerful. And, and if you combine it with deity worship and doing Harinam Sankirtan and uh, organizing festivals, all these things, then you'll stay on the path the rest of your life. And if you do that, then your senses become purified and your original spiritual senses become active. See? A lot of amazing things happen when you chant Hare Krishna sincerely and remain steady and regulated. So then... Uh, it also says, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nameva Kevalam, Kalo Nasteva, 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 Gatiranyata. For spiritual progress in this age of Kali, there's no alternative. There's no alternative, there's no alternative to the holy name, the holy name, the holy name of the Lord. So Prabhupada writes that for progress in spiritual life, the Shastras recommend meditation in Satya Yuga sacrifice for the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu in Treta Yuga, gorgeous worship of the Lord in the temple in Dwapara Yuga, but in the age of Kali, one can achieve spiritual progress only by chanting the holy name of the Lord. Only. He doesn't say, well, chanting and doing yoga. No. He doesn't say chanting and, and studying Vedanta. No. 
or chanting and doing yajyas. No, it just says only by chanting. So this is confirmed in various scriptures. In Srimad Bhagavatam, there are many references to this fact. In the 12th canto, 3rd chapter, 51st verse, it says, Kalyadosa Nidei Rajan Astihi Ekamahaduna Kirtana Deva Krishna Sya Bhukta Sangha Sya Jayate. He says, in the age of Kali, there, there are many faults, for people are subjected to many miserable conditions. Yet, in this age, there is one great benediction. Simply by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, one can be freed from all material contamination and thus be elevated to the spiritual world. There you go. You can be freed from all material contamination and be elevated to the spiritual world. The Narada Pancharatra also praises the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra as follows. Trayo Veda Sad Angani Chadamsi Vivida Sura, etc. The essence of all Vedic knowledge, comprehending the three kinds of Vedic activity, Karma Kanda, Jnana Kanda, and Upasana Kanda, the Chandas, or Vedic hymns, and the processes for satisfying the demigods, is included in the eight syllables Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari, Hari. It doesn't even say this, the rest of the mantra. It just says eight, right? Hare, Krishna, Hare, Krishna. That's it. Just Hare, Krishna, Hare, Krishna. That's eight syllables. So all these things are included just in those eight syllables. Imagine if you say all 16 syllables, right? Actually, 32 syllables is the whole Ma mantra. So, this is the reality of all Vedanta. That means the Vedic hymns, the processes for satisfying the demigods, the uh, Karmakanda, Gyanakanda, Upasana Kanda, all that is included in just Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. This is the reality of all Vedanta. You, the whole Vedanta is included just in Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. The chanting of the holy name is the only means to cause the ocean of nescience or ignorance. Similarly, the Kali Santaranya Upanishad states, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. These 16 names composed of 32 syllables are the only means to counteract the evil effects of Kali Yuga. Okay? So these are the two... Uh, Let's say, these are some of the Vedic evidences, and there's a lot of them, uh, claiming that the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is the only way to attain uh, perfection of life in this age of Kali. It is seen in, in all the Vedas, it is seen that to cross the ocean of nescience or ignorance, there's no alternative to the chanting of the holy name. Similarly, Sri Madhvacharya, while commenting, upon the Mundaka Upanishad has said. Dwa parayar jarir vishnu, vishnu pancharat reis to kevalai kalo tu nama matrena pujjate bhagavan hari. In Dwapara Yuga, one could satisfy Krishna or Vishnu only by worshiping him gorgeously according to the Pancharatriki system. But in the age of Kali, one can satisfy and worship the Supreme Person of God, Hari, simply by chanting the holy name. So that's another very important reference. Anyway, there are many more references. But then Prabhupada says, to chant the holy name of the Lord, one need not depend upon other paraphernalia, for one can immediately get all the desired results of connecting or linking with the Supreme Person of God. It may therefore be questioned why there is necessity for initiation or further spiritual activities and devotional service for one who engages in the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. The answer is that although it is correct that one who fully engages in chanting the holy name need not depend upon the process of initiation, generally a devotee is addicted to many abominable material habits due to material contamination from his previous life. In order to get quick relief from all these contaminations, notice he says, quick relief from all these contaminations, 
it is required that one engage in the worship of the Lord in the temple. The worship of the deity in the temple is essential to reduce one's restlessness due to the contaminations of conditioned life. Thus, Narada, in his Pancha Trikibiti, and other great sages have sometimes stressed that since every conditioned soul has a bodily concept of life aimed at sense enjoyment, to restrict this sense enjoyment, the rules and regulations for worshiping the deity in the temple are essential. Srila Rupa Goswami has described that the holy name of the Lord can be chanted by liberated souls, but almost all the souls we have to initiate are conditioned. It is advised that one chant the holy name of the Lord without offenses and according to the regulative principles. Yet, due to their past bad habits, they violate these rules and regulations. Thus, the regulative principles for worship of the deity are also simultaneously essential. There it is. <clears throat> so, therefore, coming back to the main point, that is, faith means unflinching trust in something sublime. When one is engaged, in the duties of Krishna consciousness. This is the second chapter, 41st verse, which is one of the verses that Prabhupada uh, lectured on many, many times. Not once, twice, three times, four times. Many, many times. Because he, went, he actually has a statement where he says that he often uh, r remembered this verse and it sustained him in Krishna consciousness. And he says, one in, who is in, engaged in the duties of Krishna consciousness, he need not act in relationship to the material world with obligations to family traditions, humanity and nationality. He doesn't say to family, he says to family traditions. Now we've discussed this before, just like in my family. Every Sunday we had a tradition. We ate roasted chicken. That was it. Every Sunday, there was a roasted chicken. We had to eat it. That was part of our family tradition. And there were other ridiculous family traditions also. I don't have to go all over them. So that, that, so that one has no obligation to those type of family traditions. So uh, with... Uh, he does not act in relationship to the material world with obligations to family traditions, humanity, and nationality. Fruit of activities are the engagements of one's reactions from past good or bad deeds. It's like one day you wake up and say, whoa, I can make so much money by selling Amway. So where did that idea come from? From your previous life. You see, it's a fruitive desire uh, and it's a reaction from past good or bad deeds when one is awake in Krishna consciousness he need no longer endeavor for good results in his activities when one is situated in Krishna consciousness all activities are on the absolute plane for they are no longer subject to dualities like good and bad the highest perfection of Krishna consciousness is renunciation of the material conception of life. Now, we've just explained several, many times what this material conception of life is. This state is automatically achieved by progressive Krishna consciousness. Progressive Krishna consciousness means gradually, not abruptly, not foolishly, gradually increasing your devotional service, your devotional responsibilities. Like Prabhupada once said, that if Lord Chaitanya is giving you more responsibility in Krishna consciousness, take it as a special mercy on you and never give it up. You should never give up responsibilities in Krishna consciousness. Of course, sometimes there may be some reason, it could be health or other things, but in general, we should hold on to the devotional service and build upon it. That's a foundation and then keep building upon it. Until one day, your whole life, there's nothing else but devotional service. The resolute 
and that's called progressive Krishna consciousness. The resolute purpose of a person in Krishna consciousness is based on knowledge. Vasudeva sarvam iti samahatma sadurlabha. This is knowledge. Oh Krishna, Vasudeva, you are everything for me. A person who says this and believes it and follows it is uh, samahatma sadurlabha, a very special mahatma. Top. Mahatma. Krishna, you are everything for me. I have no existence without you. So, a person in Krishna consciousness is the rare good soul who knows perfectly that Vasudeva or Krishna is the root of all manifested causes. As by watering the root of a tree, one automatically distributes water to the leaves and branches. So by acting in Krishna consciousness, one can render the highest service to everyone namely self, family, society, country, humanity, etc. If Krishna is satisfied by one's actions, then everyone will be satisfied. Service in Krishna consciousness is, however, best practiced under the able guidance of a spiritual master who is a bona fide representative of Krishna, who knows the nature of the student and who can guide him or her to act in Krishna consciousness. As such, to be well versed in Krishna consciousness, one has to act firmly and obey the representative of Krishna, and one should accept the instruction of the bona fide spiritual master as one's mission in life. That's what Prabhupada did. In the first 30 seconds of his meeting, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Prabhupada gave him his mission of life. He said, you are well educated in English language. You should spread this Krishna consciousness all over the world, you know, the English speaking world. So Prabhupada was shocked. In the first 30 seconds, he's telling him what he should do for the rest of his life. Right? But he took it seriously and he did it. And he made it the mission of his life. Sri Vishwanath Chakra Thakur instructs us in this famous prayers for the spiritual master as follows. Yasya prasada, Bhagavat prasada, Yasya prasada, Nanakadir katopi, Dayam stutvam, Yasya yasastri sandam, Mande gurorsi, Charanara vindam. And he says, by satisfaction of the spiritual master, the Supreme Personality of Godhead becomes satisfied. And by not satisfying the spiritual master, there's no chance of being promoted to the plane of Krishna consciousness. One should therefore meditate and pray for his mercy three times a day and offer my respectful obeisances unto him, my spiritual master. So we do that every day. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutali Shmati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamini Namaste Sarasati Deve Guruvani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Paskatya Rizatani. Yeah, we sang this many times during the day, surrendering ourselves to Srila Prabhupada. The whole process, however, depends on perfect knowledge of the soul beyond the conception of the body. Not theoretically, but practically, when there is no longer a chance for sense gratification manifested in fruitive activities. One who is not firmly fixed in mind is diverted by various types of fruitive acts. So, when one is practically, uh, depends on transcendental knowledge or perfect knowledge, they understand that the soul is beyond the conception of the body. And there's no longer any chance for them to engage in sense gratification manifested in fruit of activities. So this is Krishna consciousness, this verse, second chapter, 41st verse is extremely important. There's a lot more to say about all this, but we'll stop right there and continue a little bit more in the same track tomorrow. Are there any questions? Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, forty-first verse. Vivasat meka budhir ikaha kurunantana bahusaka hinantas cha budayo vivasayanam. Those who are on this path 
meaning Krishna consciousness, are resolute in purpose, and their aim is one. O beloved child of the Kurus, the intelligence of those who are irresolute is many branched. Okay, no questions, no answers. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Go to Premanandi Haribo. We'll go over this purport that we read today again, first canto eighteenth chapter twenty second verse, because there are many, many points that Prabhupada makes. Based on the on, on, on the purport, I would like to ask: sense gratific uh, uh, philo uh, philosophical speculation. Uh, yeah, dry philosophical speculation is a subtle sense, a sense enjoyment of the mind. Now, if it's somebody, uh, some people in the beginning, uh, they like just read the books. You know, they're not really practicing like. They don't go to temple, or they don't associate really uh, factual with devotees, but they just go through the books reading. And uh, I mean, in one sense, they appreciate the philosophy, right? but without, you know, formally uh, being, you know, doing other, part, uh, other activities, and it was some sort of like association. That, is that they, they're still in mental speculation? Uh, well, he's talking about dry mental speculation. Philosophy. This is what the Mayavadi is doing, dry mental. Philosophical. This yeah. is dry philosophical speculation. Yeah. Uh, this is what they do. They, they sit around and they make up meanings, or they, uh, they skew out meanings from the Vedas that uh, fits their desires. Uh, Prabhupada talks about this. I'll give you an example. See, when, when one is connected to sense gratification, it corrupts everything they do, everything they say, everything they think, everything they imagine, and so forth. So this is explained in the third chapter, first verse. What does that say? That says that a Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna Vacha, Gaya Si Chet, Karmanaste, Mata Buddhir Janardana, Tat Kim Karmani Goremam, Niyo Jaya Si Keshava. Arjuna said, O Janardana, O Keshava, why do you want to engage me in this ghastly warfare if you think that intelligence is better than fruit of work? Okay, so Arjuna is challenging Krishna here with this question. Mm -hmm. And the purport Prabhupada says, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, has very elaborately described the constitution of the soul in the previous chapter with a view to delivering his in intimate friend Arjuna from the ocean of material grief. And the path of realization has been recommended, Buddha Yoga or Krishna Consciousness. Sometimes Krishna consciousness is misunderstood to be inertia, meaning not acting at all. Okay? So if you act, you get reaction. If you don't act, it's not going to be a reaction. And one with such a misunderstanding often withdraws to a secluded place to become fully Krishna conscious by chanting the holy name of Lord Krishna. Now that sounds right, doesn't it? But it's not. But without being trained in the philosophy of Krishna consciousness, it is not advisable to chant the holy name of Krishna in a secluded place where one may acquire only cheap adoration from the innocent public. Arjuna, also thought of Krishna consciousness or Buddha yoga or intelligence and spiritual advancement of knowledge as something like retirement from active life and the practice of penance and austerity at a secluded place. In other words, he wanted to skillfully avoid the fighting by using Krishna consciousness as an excuse. But as a sincere student, he placed the matter before his master and questioned Krishna as to his best source, course of action. 
In answer, Lord Krishna elaborately explained karma yoga or work in Krishna consciousness in this third chapter. So, one may be so clever that they can use Krishna consciousness as an excuse to skillfully avoid doing active service, let's say. Well, there's more to say about this. Prabhupada says in a letter of uh, 1969, uh, October 18, 1969, he said, sometimes things are interpreted in a manner dovetailing one's own sense gratification. In Gaudiya Math, Different God brothers took the words of Bhaktisthan Saraswati Thakur in different interpretations for sense gratification, and the whole mission was disrupted. Right? Then in another place, he says, Vedavata Ratas, search out meanings and words of the Vedas to suit their own purposes of sense gratification. But a sincere student places a matter before his spiritual master and questions what is his best course. You see? So if one's desire is sense gratification, even though they're chanting, even though they're following, you know, seem to be following all the rules, then everything they do is going to be contaminated. Everything they think, do, say, imagine, well, it's all going to be contaminated because they will, uh, as Prabhupada says, sometimes things are interpreted in a manner dovetailing one's own sense gratification. Then he gives the example of the Gaudiya Mat. So that's what, that's what this dry speculation is. <clears throat> of the Mayavadis and of the, of the uh, what you would call the sense gratifiers, the Vishayis. So where where was where is that in the middle of the purport or the end? We're gonna begin. Huh? Almost, almost on the beginning. The beginning. Oh yeah, dry speculation is a subtle is a subtle sense enjoyment of the mind. So dry philosophical. Uh, huh? Dry philosophical. A dry philosophical speculation. Yeah. So uh, if you read modern, uh, if you read philosophy in the last. 2,500 years in the Western world, it is dry philosophical speculation. And it's, I, I, so, um, it's a type of sense enjoyment of the mind. It's, it's, okay. you, your mind is engaged in sense gratification. Yeah. Thanks, Maharaj. But I, I was referring especially to people who are reading up books, Prabhupada, like Bhagavad Gita, as it is, you know, uh, you know, uh, Prisha conscious books. Yeah. But they know actively, or oh, they have, they haven't started yet associating with the devotees. They haven't started any formal practice. They're not initiated, but they just. But well, but how can they read Prabhupada's books, and systematically avoid association with devotees when Prabhupada emphasizes it over, because, over, over, over and over again? Okay, it, but, so it, they they have not really read it properly. It's a factual because the many devotees they they will say that. I, I've been reading books for like 20, 20 years or more or less. But you're, you're saying many devotees, are they initiated? No, before they come to Krishna consciousness. Okay, so that's the point. So mm -hmm. before they come to Krishna consciousness, they're reading Prabhupada's books, but over and over again, mm -hmm. Prabhupada says you must have a bona fide spiritual master and you should associate with devotees. Mm -hmm. So how can they be reading then if, if, they, if they avoid that point that he, he emphasizes over and over again? Because of thinking, by reading those books, they're doing this kind of service, like like hearing. You know, initially, Prabhupada clearly says reading is not enough. Mm -hmm. I can show you it quotes. He said, "Reading is not enough." Well, they're trying to understand. They're trying to really to grasp the. But that's the whole point. By mm -hmm. avoiding the association of devotees, mm -hmm. they're giving themselves license for dry philosophical speculation. Okay, let me put it in this way. They not intend. They don't. They do not intend to avoid association, but for them, they try first to understand 
uh, the philosophy. You can't understand the philosophy on your own. You have to have association. <laughs> the Prabhupada emphasizes that. Yeah, that's like Ekalavya. Ekalavya, he, he claimed that, uh, that uh, he had a spiritual master, you know, Dronacharya. But actually, he was insulting Dronacharya and, and making him into a liar. And uh, he was practicing in a private place. He made a deity of his, of, of his so called guru and was practicing archery. And then one day, uh, Arjuna discovered that there's someone who's a better archer than him. And, but, but Dronacharya promised Arjuna that he'd be the greatest archer in the world. So he brings it to the attention of Dronacharya, not because he was envious of that person. He didn't see who it was. He just saw one animal that had been struck with many arrows, but he could tell by the way the animal was struck with his arrows that this was someone who was superior to him in archery. He, he just he brought it to the attention of his guru because he didn't want his guru to be a liar. And then when Dronacharya found out about it, he called this Ekalavya. And he said, so you are my disciple? He said, yes. He said, okay, but you have not given me any dakshin. He said, okay, Guru Dave, whatever you want, I'll give you. He said, cut off your thumb, your right, right hand thumb, so he can't pull the bow anymore properly. And he did it right away. Now, everyone thinks he was a pure devotee because he did it right away, right? But no, he wasn't a pure devotee at all. You have to read the commentary about that by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. That's another, another thing really to, to find out because although previously he was acting, you know, not a genuine disciple, but now by meeting Dronacharya and he requested him to cut it something straight he did. I mean, he's accepted the instruction. No, but see, you see, that was my understanding too until I read Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's purport. And he said, he said he was not really honoring his guru. He wanted to be famous. That's why he did it. You have to, you have to read his purport. I mean, you know what I you was shocked. I was shocked. I, I've, I had the same understanding you did, what you just expressed now. For a long, long time, but when when I someone told me about Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's, you know, purport on that whole episode, I read it. I was shocked that I had such a wrong concept of uh, Ekalavya. I thought he was a great person. No, I understood that was so. I, I know. But I was asking for in general, in general, somebody say, well, this is what happens when you avoid the association of devotees. You read something. And you think, oh, okay, I got the right understanding. You know, how can I be wrong? The guy cut his thumb off, you know, as soon as his guru told him to. Right, right. <laughs> but no. Well, in my own experience, before coming to the, yeah, in, in my own experience, whereas, like, you know, uh, I can speak for that, you know, initially there was inspiration. And I had association of some other devotees a little bit. But then as I was reading books, I was only using the books to do a little bit of uh, subtle sense gratification because it, it makes me feel good. And, uh, you know, and then we take things that uh, fit into our conception of uh, way of things and then reject the things that we cannot do or we cannot follow. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in a sense, uh, it is a subtle sense gratification because you're just continuing to do what you're doing and not transforming. Everything the, is contaminated mm. by the desire for sense couldn't, gratification. Couldn't you say that this is like a preparatory stage? Yeah, as long as it is a preparation, yeah. as long as it's an inspiration, it is right. Because you discover that knowledge, yes. you don't say, well, yes. let me read more and more because it really sounds good. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, so but I, it, took, it, it took them years before they become, you know, uh, initiated. And so first they were, they were really going through the philosophy. So, and then eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Prabhu, <laughs> you're uh, chasing the rabbit around the <laughs> yard. <laughs> I have a sim similar example. Well, let, let, let's do it. Let's okay. do this. And then, We'll continue uh, this discussion tomorrow. Yeah, you hold your this is just a, comment for tomorrow. This is a tricky conversation. I know, I know this. But, uh, I just.